Welcome to Diseases with Dr. Deer. Today we're going to be talking about hyperadrenocorticism, or Cushing's. Cushing's can be either pituitary dependent, where a tumor on the pituitary gland leads to oversecretion of ACTH. They can also be adrenal dependent, where a tumor on the adrenal gland leads to secretion of glucocorticoids. Cushing's disease is most often found in middle-aged to older dogs, with certain breeds like poodles or dachshunds as predisposed. Clinical signs are related to the excess cortisol. The most common symptoms are polyuria and polydipsia, or increased thirst and urination, polyphagia, or increased hunger, a pendulous abdomen, panting, muscle wasting, hair loss, thin skin, high blood pressure, and skin infections. Cushing's is not diagnosed on routine blood work. However, when paired with clinical signs, some blood work changes will make a veterinarian suspicious of Cushing's. Blood work changes seen with steroid use, like elevated liver values, Low urine-specific gravity, hyperglycemia, and thrombocytosis are supportive of Cushing's. Diagnosis is typically done through a low-dose dexamethasone suppression test. This is done by drawing a baseline cortisol concentration, then giving a dose of dexamethasone, and rechecking the blood work at 4 and 8 hours post. This works by testing the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal, or HPA, access. This test screens for Cushing's, but also helps to differentiate the type of Cushing's. Another potential test is the ACTH stimulation test, though it's not as sensitive as the low-dose dexamethasone suppression test, and you can't use it to differentiate between the different types of Cushing's. Additionally, you can have false negative with adrenal-dependent tumors. Advanced imaging can also be used to help confirm Cushing syndrome and help differentiate between these two types. CT scan and ultrasound assess the adrenal gland to look for a tumor. Treatment depends on the cause of Cushing syndrome. Pituitary-dependent Cushing's is the most common type in dogs. This is treated with an adrenal enzyme inhibitor, like trilostane. This is used to decrease glucocorticoid secretion from the adrenals. Dosages are monitored through the ACTH stimulation test or cortisol concentrations before and after taking the medications. Another drug is mitotane, which is an adrenolytic agent. If a dog is on these medications, they need to be monitored for signs of hypoadrenal corticism or Addison's disease. Symptoms of that include anorexia, vomiting, and diarrhea. Success of the medication is monitored by improvement of clinical signs, such as with their thirst or their appetite. Radiation of pituitary tumors is another option and has shown promise as new techniques are developed. Symptoms persist for several months after treatment, but these dogs do well long-term because the tumor was addressed. In dogs with adrenal tumors, removal of the adrenal gland is a treatment. There is risk to this, such as hypotension or developing of the hypoadrenal corticism. Overall, the prognosis for pituitary-dependent hypoadrenal corticism is good. Median survival time is listed around two years, though dogs with early intervention and no other disease processes tend to live longer. If you're concerned about your pet, please take them to your vet.